we have brought another edition of score booster lecture in chemistry i believe you are going to enjoy this class like we have been enjoying the other ones before our interest today is going to be uh in organic chemistry organic chemistry is like a broad class of chemistry like we have in organic like we have physical chemistry like we have environmental chemistry organic chemistry is another sweet broad type of chemistry i believe you are going to enjoy this particular section like you enjoy other sections like i've said earlier on uh, the presenter is going to be latif as usual so after today's class our interest is not uh, going to be too lewd so we just have to be able to explain what hydrocarbon is then some to so state some important properties of them even if we can state it for each of the compounds like they have we should be able to have the general properties and how they behave there's another thing called homologous series we should be able to define what is called homologous series give an example as to their properties then we need to name simple organic compound which is a very important aspect of this particular course naming organic compound is as important as uh, the, 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 the knowledge of this uh, section I mean this broad concept is uh, concerned uh, in the universe we have two major classes of uh, compounds let me see we have two major classes of uh, division so either something is living thing or non-living thing or in non-living organisms it depends the way they are present they can present as plastic they can present as ceramics they can present as metals all living organisms they are composed of hydrocarbons so under non-living organisms at least one third is composed of hydrocarbons you can see hydrocarbon is uh, plenty in the environment in our environment in our life in our everything so the, this knowledge of this particular aspect is very very important all the living all living things on earth are formed mostly from carbon compounds like our flesh like our bones like uh, our hair like the cloth even with the cloth we hear we wear the plastics we use at home the the mugs our books everything they are composed of carbon compounds Le uh, before i mean in the olden days the early chemists they were well, they, well, their knowledge was that anything that are from organisms are called organic compounds but others are not organic compounds but later it was one scientist that synthesized urea from the laboratory urea contains hydrogen contains carbon contain nitrogen contain oxygen also but not the the element it contains that makes it uh that make them refute that claim of anything and that can be synthesized only anything that are found only in the uh, organisms are called organic compounds but the synthesis itself that refuted that claim because they thought they cannot they could not uh, synthesize organic compounds but when they synthesize urea now then every other thing changed so it's now become another definition of organic compounds before it was anything that can that are found directly from organisms but now it's, it is now anything that contains carbon uh, as the main element but the disclaimer on this is that compounds like carb carbonate like co2 like cyanide they are not classified as organic compounds why because carbon is not their main compounds uh, and they are not able to cut in it one of uh, the properties of organic compounds is that carbon that is the main structure it is the main body of that of that uh, compound is able to catenate catenation means one atom of carbon one chain can join with another chain can join with another chain up to like 10 million times but in this case we cannot have 10 million uh, molecules of co3 
10 million molecules of CO2, 10 million molecules of cyanide. So there are many reasons why all these compounds are not classified as organic compounds. Today, we have vast major major class of classes of organic compounds. They contain they contain carbon, they contain hydrogen, they contain oxygen, they contain some even contain nitrogen, like plastics. Now we are going to see later where plastic is organic compounds. Like soups, we're going to see later with like perfumes, like sweeteners, like fabrics, even pharmaceuticals, and many other substances that we use every day. The value to us of organic compounds ensures that organic chemistry is an important discipline within the uh, general field of chemistry. So you can see uh, all this, not uh, only this, it's not limited to these compounds. There are many other compounds, like fuel now, that we used to run our cars, our generators, like our uh, every other things. They are uh, made from organic compounds, we are going to see later during the course of this lecture. So it may, all this makes it organic organic chemistry, knowledge of organic chemistry as important as the chemistry itself. Because we cannot do without all this. Even, even if not all of us have access to some other things like cars like uh, beautiful clothes like uh, sweeteners like beautiful perfumes like all this other thing but there are some basic things that we use that are made from even if not everything is made from organic compounds but at least a major a major part of it is made from organic compound like our pen now everybody uses pen Everybody uses book. Everybody uses uh, shoe. Everybody wears clothes. All these are made from organic compounds. So in organic compounds, we have one major class of organic compounds that is called hydrocarbons. These hydrocarbons are the simplest form of organic compounds. They contain carbon, hydrogen. They contain carbon and hydrogen, basically. You cannot see any other elements from them, only carbon and hydrogen. Even though they are composed of only two types of atoms, there is a wide variety of hydrocarbons. This wide variety is as a result of a varying length chain. You can have branches, you can have rings. There are many, not because we said it's only hydrogen and carbon. Don't forget we said carbon can catenate. You can have very length of carbon if you have one carbon with hydrogen no, hydrogen attached to it there's a name you, if you have two carbons with hydrogen attached to them there's a name if you have 500 carbons there's a name if you have 10 carbons there's a name so it, this makes uh hydrocarbon very wide a very large group of organic compounds you can have branching if you have one branch there's a name if you have two branches there's a name if you have chain one uh, i mean rings one ring two ring if anything that attached to the ring makes the name different you are going to see all these things that i'm just trying to explain uh, to introduce what the concept is all about apart from that there is a particular bond type that makes uh, this carbon uh, different even if you have two carbon atoms let's say two carbon atoms now one that contains single bonds between two ca between carbon carbon one that contains double bonds between carbon carbon, the one that contains triple bond between two carbon atoms. All of them, they are different. Their properties are different. Their reactions are different. Their usefulness are different. Even their naming, their everything, their structure, they are different. That is why we have very large number of organic uh, hydrocarbons. Many hydrocarbons are found in plants and animals and their voices. Other hydrocarbons have been prepared in the laboratory. Yes. There are some hydrocarbons that we cannot prepare them in the laboratory. There are some that we can prepare in the laboratory. The one that we, can, uh, we found in plant and animal that we thought we cannot prepare, we can actually prepare them. We use hydrocarbons every day, mainly as fuels, such as natural gas, acetylene, propane, butane, and the principal components of gasoline, diesel oil, and eating oil. So all these ones are also part of the use of hydrocarbons. So how do we classify hydrocarbons? Yeah, the first uh, classification is this 
we, we use the degree of saturation are they saturated or not don't forget we said hydrogen and carbon only so if uh, we have one carbon carbon single uh, single bond it means by definition carbon can contain four bond around it from electronic configuration point of view so if you now have one carbon atom surrounded there by another as a link to another carbon atom with a single bond it means each of the carbon atom can contain maximum of three electrons together with the bonds that are attached to the second carbon make it four so it means carbon cannot contain any other thing apart from that so it makes it a saturated compound so the name of that saturated compound is called arcanes because there's no way you can add any other bond to it another one is the unsaturated hydrocarbon that's unsaturation so this one is classified into two based on degree of unsaturation the first one is simple unsaturation that is when a carbon carbon double bond is there so you can add another compound to it without substituting the existing ones it's in the arcanes there is no way you can add another compound another atom on it or another substituent without substituting i mean without replacing any of the hydrogens but in the case of arcanes you can do that one once you can add another atom or a group of atoms to it with without substituting hydrogen that means it means uh the bond the cap the compound is not yet saturated it means it can take more it means not yet saturated it's unsaturated and this arcanes arcanes contain triple triple bond so you can add another atom or group of atom to it two times because of the triple bond if you add it to the first one break the bond it means it remains two i think it means it remains double if you add another thing it breaks that bond it, it remains one single bond so the degree of complexity of this bond uh, is an indication of how strong a particular hydrocarbon is i kind means that this third classification is stronger than this is stronger than this this one contain one uh, pi bond this one contain one pi one sigma this one contain one pi two sigma all these things makes uh the the intermolecular forces between the atoms uh with i mean in the molecules to be very strong than uh, uh than the 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 compound a bit uh below it all these uh, classification that we just talked about now they are called homologous series so what is called homologous series to uh, to be precise Homologous series is not only all these three type of hydrocarbons, but the way we classify them is called homologous series. So homologous series is a series of compounds with the same general formula, usually varying by a single parameter. That single parameter is called the length of carbon chain. So if you have a group of compounds now that contains the same formula, like now, when you have area of a circle, is pi r square. Pi is constant. So if you now have a circle with one radius, when one radius, radius of one centimeter, you have an area. You have a circle with radius of two centimeter, you have four pi. You have uh, an, uh, another area, a circle of area, radius three centimeter, you have nine pi. So you can see the first one was pi, the second one was the second one was four pi, the third one was nine pi. If you have another one with five centimeter, that is twenty five pi. So you can see as the the radius is increasing the the number of multiples of pi is now increasing so it's the same thing as homologous series we have the, the same general formula but the length of carbon atoms are just changing so the names will be changing but each of them they belong to <coughs> what is called uh, one homologous series each of the homologous series now has a general formula arcane has its own arcane has arcane has i cannot have Arcanoic acids have eta half ester half like that. All the members of homologous series contain the same functional group. 
if uh, a double bond is there, that means a double bond is there for every all of them. If a triple bond is there, a triple bond is there for all of them. If OH, I mean hydroxyl, is there, is for all of them. There are many type of functional group. We are going to see that one later. They can be represented by general formula. That is what we have discussed here. You just need to know the formula of that homologous series. Then you can name any other homologous series from it. If assume now that you have CNH2N. So just every time they just tell you what is uh, uh, homologous, uh, the like now, let's say they give you C3H6 now. What is the homologous series to which it belongs? You know, C3H6. You know, there are many formulas, there are many classes of homologous series. We have H and H2 n plus 2. I'm just saying it, we have not reached this place. C and H2 n minus 2, C and H2 n, C and H2 n plus 1. Oh, wait, there are many of that. So just uh, let me just give you any compound, just try to fit in to any of the compound and see if it's alkyne, 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 or alkanos. Anyway, they have the same chemical properties due to this functional group, the same chemical properties because the functional group uh, uh, represent how a particular group of atoms behave. The same method of preparation. This method of preparation does not mean that if you want to prepare A, you put C and D. If you want to prepare uh, F, you put C and D also. No. The same method of preparation means the same method, not the same chemicals. If you want to prepare a thing now, a compound you use is not going to be the same as if you want to prepare propane. But the method is the same. If you are using A1, let me, let me say you are using one atom of A plus one atom of B to produce C. If you want to produce D now, that is a bit higher than C in the homologous series, maybe you will need two atoms of A, two atoms of B, or you will need one atom of A prime or two atoms, uh, one atom of B prime to produce D. What we are trying to say is that you just need to change that chemical from uh, a, a, a less complex to a more complex to produce the uh, a member of that homologous series that is complex than before. We will talk about that when we are discussing the method of preparation of each of these compounds. So let's now talk about arcanes now. Each of, uh, I believe you are clear with this homologous series. So again, now each of the compounds in an arcane has sp3 hybrid orbitals. We have talked about hybridization before. So just try to look at it later. Hybrid orbitals is bonded to four other atoms, each of which is either carbon or hydrogen, as I've said earlier on. Because of this sp3 hybridization, the bond angles in carbon atoms are close to 109.5 degrees. Giving such chains in an arcane a zigzag shape. So we are going to see later. We will be representing this chain by like a single length. It's a straight line. But to be to be strict, to be fair, these compounds are not straight. Because of these angles between these uh, atoms, they are like this in zigzag manner. But we cannot be drawing this in our books like this. It's just it won't be needed to take a necessary amount of space, large amount of space. But to forestall that, uh, the, uh, our superiors, the people that have done this are uh, before us, they taught us that uh, straight line is okay, but we need to keep it in our, in our mind that these compounds are not in reality, they are not straight. So, this let's just look at this formula. formula. This is a simple member of an arcane. This is a Lewis structure. This black is carbon, all these white ones are hydrogen. And this is the name, the constricted uh, formula, CH4. You can see one C, the four hydrogen atom, and the name is methane. If you look at this formula now, it's a very expand, uh, expanded formula. You know how many C are these. It looks scary. This one is also this that is when it, when they condense it you can see ch3 is a ch2 is a ch3 is a this is ch is there attached to it is ch3 you can see another ch is there that this one's attached to it 
You can see CH2, CH2, CH3. These are there. This we, we, we are comfortable working with a condensed formula like this because we cannot be writing this all the time. It won't be comfortable. This is a skeletal formula. The skeletal structure is uh, in between two lines like this, this one and this one. There is a carbon and hydrogen there. Don't let me misinform you. I'm not saying every time you see something like this, there is carbon and hydrogen there. If it is a single bond like this, there is carbon here at this juncture and there is hydrogen there. Here, there is always CH3 there, but we are not writing it. Here, there is CH3. Here, there is CH3. Here, there is CH3. Here, you should know that there is CH2 here. You don't even need to see this formula because this is carbon and hydrogen by default. But there is no, if it were to be 3 now, it were to be 3 because don't forget, bond rand carbon should be 4. So now we have 1, we have 2. So definitely there is, and you know there is carbon here. Definitely it's only hydrogen that is remaining. So it's two hydrogen. If you look at this juncture now, there is three bond already. The hydrogen makes it four. If you look at this, there is one carbon here. There is one bond. There is one bond here. That means we have two hydrogen remaining. Here we have two hydrogen remaining. Also here we have no bond attached to this. That means we have three hydrogen remaining. That's what we are saying. Anywhere you see this now, this is a skeletal structure. We don't use it, but just need to know it because sometimes you uh, you read some textbooks that they will be using something like this, so as not to keep yourself uh, ostracized from what they are doing there. So let's just have short question and see. Draw skeletal structures of the following. So after drawing it, just check the answer from what I've done. If you look at this now, this is the terminal carbon. Nothing is attached to this. It's only this single bond that is coming here like this. So this single bond means there is three hydrogen here. So if you can get this one, that means you have this. So at this juncture, you have carbon. That is a constant. So just look at this carbon. How many bonds are attached to it? We have one to the left, one to the right, one to up, one to down. It means four carbon is complete. Can we have hydrogen? No. So up here we have CH3, down here we have CH3, here we have CH3, here we have, we have CH3. At this juncture, junction, <coughs> we have one carbon also. How many bonds attached to it? We have one, we have two, we have three. Can we have hydrogen? Yes. How many hydrogen? One. We can only have one hydrogen. So this is what we have here. So apply the same principle here. You are going to see that it's going to be the same. So this is a ring structure. One, two. So just look at this and you're going to see that it's very, very simple. So let's continue the discussion of our akin. All akins are composed of carbons and hydrogen atoms and they have similar chemical bonds, structures and formulas. The formula is CnH2n plus 1. We are in the number of carbons. If you have one carbon, it's CH4. If you have two carbon, I see H Z two H six. If you have to take up, just substitute the number of carbon here, and you have two to this one, not two to the everything. Just to you can you can see how the formula is written. Greater number of carbon uh, atom, uh, the greater number of atoms in the molecule will lead to stronger intermolecular attractions. Yes, the properties change smoothly as the number of carbon atom increases. I'm going to see now in this table. If you look at this now, the number of carbon is increasing. Number of hydrogen is also increasing. So uh, bond type, as in bond strength, is increasing. So we expect the uh, uh, the uh, the structural formula, as in the structures, to be more complex than before. And then we expect that uh, the physical properties to be different. If you look at this now, you can this one is not really uh, increasing; it's reducing here. But uh, strictly speaking. Melting point increases, uh, uh, the number of carbon atom increases. If you look at any every other member of this group, 
boiling point also increases but this one is obvious more than this it's increasing you can see minus 161 minus 88 minus 8 minus 0 all this now is increasing and the physical property is also increasing it's changing from gas gases that has a lesser a stronger attraction between the molecules up to liquid that have more strong attraction that's to solid that have a very strong attraction you don't need to memorize anything yeah just leave this one alone you don't you don't even have any business with this so but the face you see is from gas the first four members are gas followed by the uh, the next five probably the next six are liquid then others are solid because the number of uh carbon atoms they have increased after the king you have solid don't memorize anything on boiling point just uh, know that boiling point increases as the number of carbon atom increases methane point also increases what you just need to know is one carbon atom is called methane two is called ethane like this up to like decay you can have you can memorize anything but you don't even need to memorize anything per se because by practice you will know them let's go to what is called isomerism as a medicine is a phenomenon whereby two molecules having the same molecular formula but different special arrangements of atoms in their molecules like n butane and 2 methylpropane you can have the same uh, compound they belong the same homologous series they have the same general formula but the arrangement of their atoms are different you're going to see now they are called structural isoma or constitutional isoma like this one now if you look at this now we have four carbon atoms we have four carbon atoms here if you have how many hydrogen we have 10 hydrogen atoms if you count this now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten hydrogen atoms it means they are from the same homologous series but what makes them different is because of the arrangement so they just uh, take this any of this carbon you just branch it on the second carbon atom here that's just the difference so it makes them different so the properties are not the same again the usefulness to which they are subjected to are not the same again that is called what is called isomerism structural isomerism but what about this are they isomers see this you see four carbon atoms four carbon four carbon like we have are they isomers no they are not they are not isomers if you ask me why i will tell you this is butane don't forget i i've said earlier on that the structures are not linear like we used to represent it here they are not linear so just don't deceive don't let anybody deceive you by how many branchings do we have what is called branching is not on terminal carbon if you have any branch of terminal carbon i mean the last carbon here you don't have something branch here no there's no it's, it's not called called branching it is still a continuous chain like we have one two three so it's continue like this four the same thing here one two three it's continue like this four the same here one two three four these are still three chain carbon all these are called buttons they are not isomers but if you before you can have a branch it has to be on carbon that is not in any of the hands this one is is on one hand this one on one hand this one there's a branch on one hand there's another branch on this end again so it makes uh, them linear so they are not isomers you have to be very very careful on that how do we name organic compounds the num the first thing is to identify the longest chain in that structure if you identify the longest chain you have solved the first problem if the longest chain is there and you see that oh does it contain double bond single bond something like this so you know the class to which it belongs you just add the previous to the name of that longest chain to indicate the position and names of substituent like we have here the longest chain here is <coughs> three carbon you can count three from here one two three you can count three from here one two three you can count three from here one two three so if you are counting from here let's take this one simple 
one two three and there's no single uh, double bond it means this one is an arcane propane that is the meaning of uh, that's the name of the parent now the longest chain is the propane you are seeing the propane then you need to add the prefix to the name of that longest chain to indicate the position and name of the substituent name of the substituent in this case is called instead of you know when uh carbon uh compound is methane like we saw here like we saw here it's called methane but when there is sort of one hydrogen now it's called methyl so methyl so this is methyl so where is the position of this methyl it's on the second carbon so we are having two here but if you are, if you are separating the name of this now you put a dash in between if you have more than two substitutions, let me let's say, assume that you have another metal on top here. You have two two dimethyl. Two and two will be separated by comma. Then the other name will be separated by dash, like we have here. Carbon atoms in the chain are counted from the end of the chain nearest the substituent. So let us assume that you have another carbon here now. You can count from here one, two, three, four. You can count from here one, two, three, four. I mean, if you have another carbon here instead of this hydrogen, so you can name it as two methyl butane or three methyl butane. So what this rule is trying to tell us is that if you have two methyl butane and three methyl butane, you take two methyl butane because you need the smallest number possible on where the substituent is attached. Multiple substituents are named individually and placed in alphabetical order at the front of the name. So this is a propane. This is another propane. The first rule, the, the substituent is, is attached to this second carbon. This is cl two chloro because it's chlorine chloropropane. This one is two methylpropane. So in this case, you have four. Uh, you have a uh, six carbon. Uh, you have two. From uh substituent here now this first one two three four if you count from here it's also one two three four five six you can have three five dichlorohexane or two four dichlorohexane if you add three and five you get eight if you have two and four you get six so six is more correct because the smallest number should be used when you are attaching the substituent but when you have two different uh, substitutions like this, the same rule applies. The lowest number possible is applied. And again, you need uh, hydro, uh, alphabetical order. C, bromo comes before chloro. B comes before C. Not in this arrangement. Even if you have it like this. One bromo. So you give preference to this uh, one bromo. One, two, three. One bromo. 3 chloro -exine. You see the way they are uh, they are arranged and they are numbered. The spacing, the everything you have to take cognizance of all this. When more than so, one substituent is present, either on the same carbon atom or on different carbon atoms, the substituents are listed alphabetically, like I've said here. Because the carbon atom numbering begins at the end closest to a substituent. The longest chain of carbon is numbered in such a way as to produce the lowest number for, substitute, for the substituent. I've explained that. The ending O replaces IDE, that is for halogen. Uh, uh, if you have like chloride now, you have chloro, fluoride, you have fluoro. At the end of the name of one electronegative substituent. In ionic compounds, the negatively charged ion with IDE, like chloride, in organic compounds, such names are treated as sub, uh, substance and who ending is used. I've explained it here now. Like instead of chloride, you have chloro. If you have fluoride, you have fluoro. If you have iodine, you have iodo. The number of substituents of the same type is indicated by the prefix, prefixes like this. If you have, like, let's say you have two fluorine atoms now, like we have in difluoro here. See difluoro, if, if you have three, you have trifluoro if they are the same. If they are not the same, you treat them uh, like uh, according to this alphabetical order arrangement. 
we call the substituent that contain one less hydrogen than the corresponding arcane and arcane group. I've explained this now. If you, instead of methane, you have methyl. Instead of ethane, you have ethyl. The name of an arcane group is obtained by dropping this surface A and E of the arcane and name it as YL. Okay. Some, some people call it methyl group, some people call it ethyl. Just make sure you know how to write it and how to as in how to identify it if you see that is the most important thing so let's now do some examples before we have exercise and go if you look at this now the first rule is to identify the longest chain one two three four so you know this is propane now ah sorry booting sorry 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 booting so now Identify it as protein because there's no other long chain that you can have. So now we have two substituents. We have bromine, we have chlorine. Chlorine is attached to the first carbon. Bromine is attached to the second carbon. So now the name of this will now be. You can count from here. You count from here. So if you count from here, let's assume that you have one, two. 3, 4. Now be a 3 bromo 4 chloro butin. Write that one down. Come from the second, uh, the, the second, as in the other hand. 1, 2. 2 bromo 1 chloro butin. The first one was 3 bromo 4 chloro. So now you can see now. 3 bromo 4 chloro is, if you add 3 and 4 together, it's higher than 1, as in 2 bromo 1 chloro. So 2 bromo 1 chloro is now correct so this one will now be the first carbon this one will now be the second carbon the second carbon now now name it first because of this bromo two bromo then one chloro you cannot name it as three bromo four chloro because you need to give the substituent the lowest number possible another example is this don't be intimidated by this you can count the num the largest uh, carbon atoms, the largest chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can count from here. One, two, three, four, five. You can count from here. One, no, from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can take this, or you can take this. So to be to be uh, simple, let's take this. So now if you take this now. If you count from here, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this substance now is an ethyl group. Like we have a CH3, CH2. It's an ethyl group. Sorry. It's an ethyl group. So if you now count from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's now, it's now be 4 ethyl exine. If you count from here, 1, 2, 3, 3 ethyl exine. Exine. You can see 3 is less than 4, so you can just take 3 ethyl exine. That's it's as simple as that. So, exercise now to so demonstrate uh, if you have learned what we have discussed, just try to uh, do some exercise and check your answer with my home. You can pause this video as you are doing it, then, after doing it, just uh, check the solution. So, the second one. Then that's the name. So before we go, let's add some review of what we have learned. Hydrocarbons are substances that contain only hydrogen and carbon. Some logo series is a series of compounds with the same general formula but different structural arrangement. Isomers are molecules having the same molecular formula but different uh, sorry, a homologous series is a series of compounds with the same general formula uh, that the com whose complexity increases as yeah, we get it from lower number to higher number. Isomers are molecules having the same molecular formula but different structural arrangement of the atoms in their molecules. Then we saw we said that organic compounds are named by considering the longest chain. The substituents are arranged in alphabetical order in such a way that lowest number is given. In some cases, the last set of alphabets are changed. Okay, so thank you very much.
uh, we are going to discuss further on this like the method of preparation and how to uh, uses of them then we go to another compound like this we are going to enjoy this uh, area of chemistry very well thank you very much for listening and god bless you. there we go